Hi everybody, my name is Sean Sheehy and I make pop-up books. Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple and quick pop-up butterfly greeting card, which is doubly cool today because I'm recording on Earth Day. So aside from the fact that we're going to make a card that features a creature of the wild world, here's a butterfly, uh, but also we're going to make it completely out of recycled materials that you can find around the house. So let's get started. You're only going to need two tools to make this project. You're gonna need a pair of scissors and you're going to need a pencil. In terms of supplies, um, you're going to need a couple uh, pieces of cardboard. So for the wings of the butterfly, I'm going to use this uh, butter box and the white inside is what you'll see in the card. For the card itself, I'm going to use um, I'm going to use a granola box. So I guess this is a product placement project as well as a as a pop up project. And then finally, um, I was digging through some scrap paper and I found this piece of green that um, is a nice, bright, cheerful, springy green color that's got a little bit of texture to it. So I like that as well. Um, and then finally, you're going to need some glue. And I'm going to be using PVA, which stands for polyvinyl acetate. Um, uh, fun fact, polyvinyl acetate is the same thing as the um, neutral gum base for artificial chewing gum. So if you're chewing Wrigley's chewing gum, you're chewing PVA. Uh, that's fun. So, uh, so let's do this. I'm going to begin with... Uh, cutting out just one of the panels from this granola box. I'm just going to use one side without any folds running through it to serve as the card. And you know, a lot of the things that I'm using today are, um, are not, you know, they're not uh, essential that you use exactly the same kind of thing. With pop-ups, the weight of the material that you're using uh, can really vary. And sometimes your pop-ups work better if the material is a little thicker, and sometimes it works better if it's a little thinner. So, um, so it's worth experimenting and just using what you've got and, and, and see what happens. So here's, if I can finish this, there we go. Here's that first panel of the card cut out and before I put it off to the side I'm going to go ahead and give it a fold in the short dimension matching corners and then I'm going to put some pressure on that fold to make sure it's nice and crisp you can also if you want take the handle of your scissors and run it over that fold kind of using your scissors like a tool we call a bone folder and make that make that fold nice and crisp all right, so one of the things that um, is kind of interesting about this pop-up in terms of the structure of pop-ups uh, is that pop-ups really are only made out of two basic structures. And one is called a parallel fold structure and the other one is called an angle fold structure. Uh, and this butterfly is made out of a parallel fold structure. All of those pieces that are behind the butterfly that make it move that's kind of what I'm referring to right now. So I'll show you in a second why we call it a, a parallel fold structure. Now you're going to cut two lines on the outside of your card. And I'm going to draw them with a pen first, but you don't have to. You can go straight to cutting. But I'm going to draw them so I can talk about them while I'm doing it. So here's one line. Here's a second line. And here's some interesting things to note about these two lines. One is that they are the same length. Two is that they both touch the folded side of the card. Three, they're parallel to each other. Four, they're perpendicular to this fold. And five, the distance from one line to another is about twice the length of a single line. So it's one line, two line, one line, two line, you know, more or less, one to two ratio. 
And all of these choices that I've made uh, right now are sort of arbitrary, but it's a good starting place. And when you're ready to experiment, you can play with some of those dimensions and, and see what happens. I'm going to cut now on both of those lines. And I'm cutting all the way through both, uh, both sides of the card while I do it. And then I'm going to take this center part that I've just released and I'm going to fold it over and then again use that trick with the scissors handle and really press in that fold. And then I'm going to flip it in the opposite direction and press in that fold really good again. If I undo the fold, I can open the card up and I'm going to close the card again, but this time I'm going to push from the back so that I can make this center part come forward and then close the card with that center part coming forward, pressing in those creases all again real quick. Sorry about that drop. And here's my parallel fold structure. And it has that name because the two points where this structure attaches to the card run parallel to the center fold of the card or the gutter. So that's all there is to it. All right, so I'm done with that for a second. Now I'm going to grab um, one of my scraps from this box and I'm going to cut two chunks. And you don't have to measure these once again. I'm just kind of eyeballing things. And each of these two chunks is about three quarters of an inch by an inch and a half, more or less. Not measuring, but it's more or less right in there. They're not exactly the same size, but they're close. And I'm going to glue these two chunks onto this parallel fold structure that I just built into the card. So I'm going to get my glue out. I'm going to tell you, I am a guy that likes to apply glue with my fingers. And um, if you would prefer to apply glue with a brush, that's totally okay. If you'd like to apply glue with a scrap of cardstock or a little micro spatula, if you've got some fancy tools, you know, whatever. So I glued this small strip onto the parallel fold structure. It's tacked down on the right hand side and then it extends over the left and it's at the bottom of this whole expanse. I'm going to put a little glue on my finger again. I'm going to put some glue onto the second strip and I'm going to glue it starting on the left hand side and it's going to extend over the right hand side. Also, um, I didn't mention this earlier. Um, I'm using this, this glue called PVA, which is, um, which is very popular in the bookbinding world, um, but it's not necessary. Uh, a glue stick today would be fine. Um, a craft glue like Sobo would work really well. Elmer's is okay. Tape is fine, staples are amazing. You know, whatever you've got that you can stick things together with. Um, hot glue also might be really useful today. Um, because we're gluing surfaces that are a little slick, maybe even a little bit waxy sometimes, um, glues don't work as well as they do on raw surfaces that are more porous. So you may have to experiment a little bit to get something that sticks well. PVA does a good job. And I just buy that. That's something that you can buy at, at, at Blick. All right, it's time to make some wings. I'm going to put that off to the side. I'm going to grab the butter box and I'm going to, um, I'm going to cut one of these panels free. Just like this, just like this. <clears throat> And I'm going to make sure that I'm starting with a piece of this white material that is shorter than my card. Because I'm going to cut the wing from this and I want to make sure that uh, when I'm done that the wing doesn't stick out of the card. 
I mean, it would it would work mechanically. It would work, but it would stick out of the card, and when it's closed, it might get banged up or something. So that might make you unhappy. Then I'm gonna draw out a wing shape onto this white surface. Get a little lead going there. That's interesting. Let's edit that out. <laughs> there we go. That's kind of a nice curve for a wing. And then I'm going to cut that. And you guys probably know, because you're you've been outside and you've seen things, that butterflies have lots and lots of different wing shapes. So there's lots of ways that you can draw this butterfly wing and have it either look like a real butterfly if you want that, or to look like a butterfly of your imagination. That's great too. All right, so there's half of the butterfly. And I am going to trace this side by flipping it over and dropping it onto another part of the butter box. <clears throat> this way I'll have two sides of the butterfly wing that are symmetrical. There we go. I'll cut that out. I mentioned this earlier, but I <clears throat> live in Chicago, and so it's a little bit chilly today in Chicago. I think it's about the mid-50s, and um, spring is solidly here, though, which is lovely, and I'm working out of my home studio where it's fairly quiet, and Got all my supplies up here. It's a good place to work. Okay, there are my two halves of the butterfly. They've got that straight edge in the center where the two of them can touch and meet and kind of complete the shape. So now I'm ready to glue these pieces into the card. One wing is going to glue on one side of the gutter. The other wing is going to glue on the other side of the gutter. Now you may or may not be able to see the um, parallel fold and the strips that are underneath, and that's totally fine. If you can see them, great. If you do, if you can't see them and you don't want to see them, you can always trim that uh, away after you glue the wings down. I'm going to put some glue onto the strip that's sticking out to the right hand side and glue that wing set over the top. So it's glued to the end of the strip. One end of the strip is glued to the parallel fold. The other end of the strip is glued to the wing. And then same for the bottom. Here's the part that's loose and sticking out. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on that and stick the wing to it. I'm gonna let there be a little bit of space, just a little bit of space in between the wings because otherwise they'll, they'll kind of crush together in the center when I close the card. Also, when I'm applying glue, I'm just applying uh, you know, enough to make it stick but not so much that it squeezes out when I put pressure on. Also, again, those back surfaces of this stock are, um, are a little slippery and the absorption isn't super great. So I'm going to hold this and let it dry <clears throat> for some extra time before I pick it up or do anything with it. So I'm going to put that over to the side 
let that glue dry and set. And in the meantime, I'm going to grab my piece of scrap paper and um, I'm just going to cut a chunk out of this. And I'm going to cut some, I think I'm just going to cut a, cut a bunch of dots. Kind of like I had in the, the, the model that I showed you at the beginning. And you know, if you're if you're kind of struggling a little bit to find some interesting colors of scrap paper um, to decorate with, um, you can skip this part and you could decorate your butterfly with some markers or some crayons or colored pencils. Um, you can again use some more product boxes to get little parts of color that you can cut and glue on there. You can get some mail out of the garbage and find maybe some colorful parts of some mail and glue that on. Sometimes it's really kind of fun and interesting to collage pieces together um, that have different kinds of patterns and colors on. All right, so that's six. I'm going to cut two more. And I think my dots are getting bigger as I go, but that's fine. Kind of interested in the dots. And then I'm going to glue those onto the, my butterfly wings. Little dot. Tack it down. Little dot. Tack it down. I like how big dots make something look kind of bouncy, lively. I also like how this bright green and the stripes look a little bit like the surface of a, of, of a, of a caterpillar itself. I'm thinking of the black swallowtail caterpillars. <clears throat> we get a lot of those up here in northern Illinois where I live. They like to come into the vegetable garden and, and eat a lot of dill. Okay, let's do one more. There's one more. All right. And with the model, you might recall, let me pull that out again. I had some extra butterflies that were in the background that I cut out of that same stock material. So I think I'm gonna do a couple of those real quick here too. And again, this is just, um, I'm just kind of eyeballing and freehanding as I go. I'm not even going to uh, think about drawing anything out right now. But if you would rather do that and kind of plan something before you make the cut, that's totally all right. They're both good strategies. So there's one. Let's do one more. Here's another piece. I guess I'm doing all the same species of butterfly, though I don't know what this is. Kind of the same approach to the shape. Good. And when I glue these two butterflies down, just going to put a little dot, like a nickel or a quarter size dot in the center and tack it down. That's really all you need. Just to keep it from flying away on you. All right, let's close this card and see what happens. Pretty good. Pretty good. One last thing before we wrap up. Um, this approach to making a pop-up means that when it's closed, you got this kind of weird chunk that's bit out of the side like this. And so I'm going to cover that up um, by just taking one more square of this decorative paper. 
that big enough? Yeah. And I'm just going to tack that onto the card to cover up that space. Just like that. If you prefer, you could cut a large piece of this um, this decorative paper, this scrap paper, and you can make big enough to just cover the whole card on both sides, and then you would have, you know, one continuous surface. If you'd rather do that rather than have just a patch. All right, there's our pop-up butterfly. So thanks everybody for joining me in making this pop-up butterfly card today. Uh, I'd love for you to come and visit me at seansheehy.com and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.